Right. Welcome, everybody. Um, and thank you for being here, and thank you for getting me in. To me, it's an honor to be in Houston at the EMW conference. I am Sabine Melnitsky from Wiki Ahoy. I'm from Vienna, Austria. And I'm together with uh, Lex Sulzer from Datospect from Switzerland. We are sort of the German speaking European delegation, as we call it, um, or country ambassadors. We will be um, working closely together. Uh, yes, I have a small um, digital consultancy in Austria and working with Semantic Media Wiki for a couple of years now. Um, this was meant to be a beginner's training, a beginner's tutorial. Um, that's how it was set up and planned, but um, we were saying uh, it doesn't look like there will be so many people not having uh, been worked with the uh, Semantic Media Wiki whatsoever, so we decided to find a little bit of a different approach. Um, may I ask you how many of you haven't ever used Semantic Media Wiki before? I get one, I get before this conference. Yes. Yes, you said you would be working with it for, for, for a while now. MediaWiki. Just MediaWiki, not Semantic MediaWiki. I see, because we've got one and two, three, okay. Um, um, the idea is that we, we would like to introduce our, our concept, our idea, our approach, um, but um, if you're interested, we might be splitting up later on and do that, kind of just add up that beginner's tutorial later on, yeah? Um, I'd like to be, um, we're gonna get start slow and easy and I'd like to keep this interactive. So anytime you feel like you're having a question or a concern, please interrupt and, and we love questions. So um, this is a tutorial and uh, not a talk, yeah? Okay, um, uh, I'd like to show you, we start with three questions. When working with uh, knowledge management in a wiki, um, using a wiki for knowledge transfer, we ask ourselves three questions. And what do our users want? What do they need? Yeah? In, in the company context, of course. Um, what enables knowledge transfer? Um, and how can a wiki support that? Um, I'm coming from the direction, my background is a little bit uh, different than Lex, for example. Um, he's coming more from the technical side, I'm coming from the language content part. Um, so, the, um, what's it called, the um, more traditional knowledge management, okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, the first question, what do, you, what do our users want? Um, I believe our users are, uh, want an intuitive platform. They're used, um, man, reading a manual is very 1990s. Users are um, used to apps that they understand in an instant, okay? Um, uh, they don't want to start with an empty page in their wiki. They want to have some certain structure, some um, guidelines they can follow. They want to be guided through. So um, what we try to do is design a structure for uh, the independent autonomous user. We don't want uh, the user to have to learn anything to use our system. It should be intuitive. Um, and he should be able to guide himself through without our help, yeah? Um, um, we can help him doing this by providing a very logical and easy structure, an easy and logical navigation, um, a good, well-working error messages. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, and in general, good usability. Uh, okay, of course. Um, the user's time is scarce and his patience is ending. Um, uh, you know that in the context, context of the web, seconds are a long time to wait for pages to load and everything. So um, nowadays, a user doesn't have the time to 
he doesn't land on our page on, in the wiki or whether on the website or, the, or in the wiki, land there, click himself through, browse a little bit. That's usually not uh, what's happening anymore. He's searching. He's hitting his question into a search bar and lands on our page, and if he doesn't find the information he's uh, looking for, he's gonna be gone in a second. So um, what we design for now is we design our pages for the searches and not for the browsers, um, which is a very important approach because it makes uh, the pages, um, we need to design the pages in a different way. Um, we don't guide the person through our website on a long pathway step by step, but you only have the chance to catch the user on this page. All he needs to know um, uh, should be on this one page, right? Um, and the last one, um, our users are clever, intelligent, and informed. Yeah, we're working with, um, we take that positive approach towards our users, our readers, but they are dependent on our system. They land on our website and they can't change anything by themselves. They're dependent on uh, what we provide them. So um, we design for an easy structure, easy usability, but uh, with qualified content, with good, high level quali um, quality in our content. Um, yeah, to sum that up, um, we design a structure for autonomous users, for searches instead of browsers, and for qualified readers. A any questions so far up to here? Good, that's fine. Um, what is important uh, in the context of knowledge uh, transfer? I'm sure you've heard that before, but let's just uh, quickly go through it. Um, um, to be able to, to reuse and to work with knowledge, it needs to be explicit and not tacit. We talked about this yesterday. It depends a little bit on how you define knowledge. In my, um, in my definition of knowledge, knowledge is something in the people's minds. It's as soon as you um, communicate it, as soon as you write it down, it's um, information, it's data, um, but it's, I guess that's a matter of definition, yeah? Um, uh, let me check if I, okay. So what you, need to, um, what you need to do to make knowledge explicit is to write it down, to communicate it, to put it in, in any format, uh, written down. Uh, uh, knowledge needs to be in a transferable format. It needs to be able to put into other formats from one format to the other. That means um, uh, yeah, of course it's not a good way uh, anymore to put it on paper. You want it online. You want it maybe in a structured way so you can reuse it, uh, uh, you can reuse the data for other, um, um, for other purposes. And uh, last but not least, it's, it needs to be comprehensible. You need to write down the uh, knowledge, not for yourself, but for others. You write for others, for your future self, in a way um, that you and the others can understand you. Yeah? Um, definitely, if, as soon as he starts, write, he or she does uh, writes it down, that's a good thing. Um, I don't know, um, our approach is from an administrator point of view to, to make it as easy as possible for the user to actually produce comprehensible content. Um, it's a difficult, if it's, it's a difficult task, of course, because, you know, every human is different, but, um, if we agree on something that we understand, I understand it this way, this is the way we um, name things maybe, then it makes it easier for every, every one of us. So um, knowledge is, as I see it, as it, it's in the heads of the humans, yes, and it's inside ourselves, but um, if, we, yeah, if we agree on something we talk about, I guess it's, it's easier to understand. Does this, yeah? Does this answer the question? Please. 
Okay. Um, how can the wiki help with that? Um, with that idea, um, the wiki can motivate to write down. Okay, it can help us. Um, it can motivate to write down. What's what's? Why is it good to write it down? Maybe because I can use the data for something else. Maybe I can generate generate queries, reports, graphs, some information that I didn't know I know. Yeah, I do something with my with my data with um, uh, information. I have some extra added value out of writing it down, not just for myself, but also for others. Um, I can keep the information for later, I can look it up. These are all added values um, uh, compared to just keeping it to myself. Um, it can motivate to only use the wiki as a single point uh, of information, as my first step uh, for my questions, for um, guidance. Uh, yeah, and it can motivate me to write, to be read. So I don't really just note down things for myself. <laughs> Lex always keeps saying for my future self, so it's like me and the other person, but in the company for all, also for my uh, colleagues, for my employees. Um, yes. Um, and we do this, we provide a structure that supports this idea, that motivation. So, um, and what I'd like to go on with is the idea of EPO or Jesse, as I'd like to call it. EPO is a manifest, a concept by Mark Baker. Uh, he wrote this book in 2013. This one, okay. Um, and um, it's not like he invented something new or he's basically just uh, describing what's already there. It's not a prescriptive idea or a prescriptive manifest, it's very descriptive. It just looks at what's there. Um, and I'd like to call it Jesse, that's the German version, Jede Seite ist Seite 1, because we'd like to adapt his idea uh, for our purposes. Um, Mark Baker looked at how web is uh, constructed, how technical documentation is uh, written uh, on the web, um, and documented that, and we adapt that in our Jesse system for the wiki, okay? I'd like to guide you through um, a few general concepts. Um, yes. Um, every page is page one. He says, uh, inclu include it all, filter it afterwards. It's not, um, we don't decide on what's uh, valuable or not. This is something up to search. We put everything in there and search uh, is finding the information I'd like to. I have my search question, I can filter this search question, I drill it down, whatever, but I have all the content um, and choose what's valuable afterwards. This is why search has such an important function in, in this concept. And of course, Google nowadays is at the center, is at the heart of the web, and it also should be at the heart of any wiki, yeah? Um, distributed nature of the distributed nature of the web. We don't have a hierarchical structure anymore. We don't use um, uh, these, um, uh, what are they called, these, uh, anyway, these systems, the correlated systems. We have uh, a network of connected pages. We have a semantic structure. This is just how it developed. Um, and um, bottom up architecture, is uh, something that, um, I don't know, Mark Beck is proclaiming that uh, bottom-up bottom up architecture is the way we, we develop content, we write content. Um, yeah. Uh, Lex? Sorry. No, go on. Hmm? It'll clear up, okay. Um, just one quote for bo bottom-up organization. Bottom-up organization appears messier than top-down organization. Um, top-down organization, of course, we have the classic uh, um, navigation for browsing. Bottom-up is this every page, this page one system. Um, it is only because it is more accurate, accurately uh, re reflecting the messiness of the real world. Yeah? The real world isn't structured. It doesn't have an end to it, uh, its pages. 
and uh, this is what happens in the wiki as well. So um, three famous examples for, yes? Yes, yes, you could say so. And the idea is um, with the bottom-up architecture, you also have bottom-up navigation. Top-down navigation is hierarchical as uh, is the, the menu, the classical one. Uh, bottom-up is a lot of like, uh, you have local navigation compared to global navigation. You have a lot of hyperlinks interlinking on, on this level. Uh, yeah, it goes the other way. Um, uh, Good point. Did you say you, you, you start with the content and maybe structure it, collect it, put it together, correlate it afterwards, and don't provide an empty structure and fill it up with content? Yes, nice. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm sure you all know uh, the most famous example is Wikipedia, and this is why this, this idea so well fits with the wiki. Uh, because every wiki, you know, Wikipedia is the, the most famous wiki. As we know, Stack Overflow is the technical, um, does anybody not know Stack Overflow? <laughs> and never been there, yes, okay. And WordPress Codex, which I believe uh, also runs on a media wiki, if I'm right. Yes, I, yeah. Um, uh, yes, WordPress Codex is a very good example for technical uh, documentation on, on this basis. The quality is very different because you have different writers uh, uh, of certain topics. Okay, let's move on. Um, four basic concepts, four basic uh, parts of, of this idea are the topic, the topic type, um, the context, which is the most important part for me, and the content. Um, what is a topic? Um, a topic in, in Apple, in the Jesse system, is self-contained. It stands alone, it functions alone, it works alone, it doesn't um, need any other page um, to be understood. Um, yes, how does, this, how does this work again with the bottom up idea that we have a local uh, navigation, we have rich hyperlinks, um, we have all the information we need on this page, we set up the context, um, yes. Um, For the context, you mean, or for? We are talking about, in, in a wiki, of course, we're talking, uh, a topic will be one single page, okay? But we need to distinguish what's a topic and what's not a topic. What makes up, what makes a topic, what's too much for a topic, what's not enough? Is that what you, what you try and, what do you want to say? Absolutely, yes, very well done. Um, um, this, no, well, very, very good. Um, the topic assumes reader qualification. This is very important. We, we go on and say that our user knows everything he needs to know to be able to follow this page, except what we are telling him on the page. So everything that he needs to know to understand what's there, um, he knows. Um, 
only accept this information, only accept the recipe of spaghetti carbonara. And in case he doesn't know any of these bits and pieces and parts, we link him to the content. We don't include it, but we link. So he can uh, follow his way through in case uh, he doesn't uh, know any of these parts. Okay. Um, yes, um, I'd call it. I'd call it a little bit differently. Let me let me uh, go back to this. Um, it's uh, this is the main part for me. The most interesting bit is to establish context. Um, so if you if we uh, are on the spaghetti carbonara page, I start by um, um, I set up. Um, uh, sorry, missing a word here. Okay. Um, uh, you say what it's part of, you say what parts you have, you establish the context of that page. So we're talking about spaghetti. Spaghetti is a, a, a nutritious meal. Um, we have a recipe here. Um, it comes, spaghetti are a part of um, a type of pasta. Pasta is, uh, comes from Italy, all these sort of, sort of ideas. What is it not? What, I what does it include? Um, what parts do we have? What am I part of? So I get an idea, that's, that's where I am. This is like, this is the frame of what I am on this page. And if I'm looking for something else, oh, I wasn't looking for spaghetti, um, the, the food, I was looking for spaghetti, the software, I need to go somewhere else, um, like this, okay? Um, let me see what I, what I skipped. Uh, yeah, the topic has a limited purpose. Um, it, its purpose can be to get an, give information to uh, bring an overview, to uh, show task, to show instructions. Um, so this single page only always has one purpose. If I want um, uh, to give an overview over the history of spaghetti, this would be a topic. Um, and uh, the recipe of cooking spaghetti carbonara would be another topic, just because it's a very different purpose, okay? Um, yes. Uh, um, in the in the context of the context, um, I, I really like this quote. It says, uh, "A well-designed information set is like a well-designed transportation system. It allows the passengers to travel individual itineraries along shared routes." So I set up the routes the possible ways um, he can travel, and because I can't uh, cover every reader's need, I make it possible for them to, to click themselves through the information, okay? Um, difficult part of the topic is it conforms to a type. We had a lot of discussion of what makes up a type and, and, and uh, what doesn't. A type is very, closely related to a purpose. The purpose of the page defines the type. Um, and in the context of Semantic Media Wiki, um, one type, one topic type would um, translate into one form and template structure. Yeah? Okay. Um, and the last part, let's see. Yes. Um, having defined our purpose and our topic type, we stay on one abstraction level. Um, I'm not talking about pasta in general, and I'm not talking about uh, whipping cream for the last bit uh, after the recipe. I'm talking about spaghetti carbonara. So um, it's, it's not up to me to, to give everything possible uh, every, uh, to serve every abstraction level. It's, again, up to the user to decide, I want to go one deeper, one level up. Um, through uh, uh, rich linking. I make that possible through, through the links. Um, yes. Establishes context, uh, assumes reader qualification, uh, and links richly. Of course, we are, we're in the web. 
Hyperlinks are the at the heart of the web. We need links uh, to guide the user to, to give him all these possibilities. So um, again, to sum it up, topics are self-contained. They stand alone. They have a limited purpose, conform to type and stay on one level. That sort of just goes together. Um, they establish a context uh, at what they're in and they assume a qualified reader. So how does this um, possibly look? Um, it's in German, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can see an idea of what this could transform into a form, into a structure that the, re uh, the, the writer is actually writing his topic. You have the topic on the, on the top, you have the purpose uh, and uh, the content, the topic type, you have the context and, and the content. And I go a little bit more into detail. With the topic, we're talking page title, we're talking URL, we're talking wiki words, for example, that's uh, FOSS wiki is working with wiki words, that's their linking system, that's all the same thing. Um, I need to uh, uh, decide on these. Um, purpose, um, again, um, is the trans tran transforms into the topic type, into the, the special local navigation, into the repeating structure, into my fields uh, in the form, etc. cetera. Um, the context, or as we'd like to call it, the blurb, um, is this little first paragraph at the beginning of every page. Um, if you look in, in certain wikis, Wikipedia is very good with that. They have very good um, um, context set up. If you have a page about Argentina, you find, okay, Argentina is a country, is a republic country in South America. It has, uh, is neighbored by, by these countries, so many inhabitants, etc. They set up the context. Um, context can be, um, a definition of terms, what are we talking about? What synonyms are we talking about? Synonyms, antonyms, word origins. Um, what subordinates and umbr umbrella terms um, uh, might apply? Mm, what scope, thematical scope and um, a time scope are we talking about? And uh, we can describe the development. How did this term, um, where did this term come from? Um, also, what future plans can we expect? Uh, what requir requirements do I need to uh, have to be able to, to work with this topic to understand uh, the subject? Yes. Um, and again, a very important part in this context is to link richly. In this paragraph, you find a lot of links to see to, um, to make it possible for the user to go to other pages. Last one is the content. This is the free text. Uh, we're writing about uh, the topic itself. That's, that's basically it. Yes. Please. Um, It's, uh, Dublin Core is more, uh, is working with ontologies, right? It's, it's an like, ontology. It's an ontology. Yes, yes. yes. To, to I'm not too much into it, but uh, I know, yes. Well, uh, metadata, a lot of like this, yeah. Um, um, mm, it's, it's a little bit of a different approach again. It's more like the technical side of, uh, of it. Uh, the way I see Epo or Jesse is really um, more from the content side. If I have a lot of text, a lot of uh, running text, free text, how can I still structure that and how can I still guide my, my users through? Yeah? Um, Lex, then I, well, thank you for up to now, up to here. Thank you.